So uh, here you can see information on the tumor, uh, but there's also generic information on the patient and on the study. So, okay, the data is in uh, Open Clinica, and at the time of putting the data actually into Transmart, we discovered that there were version issues. This is the data in Transmart, but we also later had an Excel file. We had different versions in which they said progression-free survival versus overall survival was slightly different. So this warranted us to have a closer look at the data. Uh, so it was actually good for quality checks as well. Uh, there is biobank data of a subset of patients DNA has been isolated and put into catalog. So we have information on the patient, what sample got taken, how it got stored. And then there is also a collection protocol, like who to contact if I want to have access to uh, the DNA, for instance. So it's present. And then experimental data, there's methylation. Uh, a gene is not methylated versus it is methylated. Mutation data, it's mutated or wild type. And then in the genomic landscape paper, using comparative genomic hybridization microarray or RCGH, uh, chromosomal alterations were determined in the patients. So basically here you have a DNA profile from chromosomes 1 up to X. And then basically if the dots are above the zero line, it means that the patient has an increase of genetic material for a certain chromosomal location. And the reverse, if it is below the zero line, they have a loss of genetic information. So from patients at baseline, a biopsy was taken, this was profiled, then they were assigned to treatment arms, and then what was the aim of the genomic landscape paper as well, was to try to correlate, uh, well, try to determine whether there was a correlation in treatment response and the type of drug they got. So uh, the PhD student has left, have handed over her hard drive with her data, uh, has published the results in an article, and then some questions arise after the project. There are some generic questions, like for which patients do we have a type of data? Copy number, mutation, survival. And uh, another question is like, okay, we had these different versions. We know two PhD students worked on a study. Was there an overlap in their patients, uh, in, in their studies? And then also a really nice uh, question. Can I actually reproduce the results of my PhD students if I have the same data that they used uh, for their analysis? So here you can see a screenshot of the study in Transmart. And, uh, well, of note should be, you can't upload data to Transmart yourself. You really need a member from the data team to do this. And I can really recommend a session tomorrow, uh, because Jochem Bijlaert and Wiebo Pipping will be giving a workshop on how to get your data in there. And actually in the parallel session right now, they're explaining more about fair data and harmonization efforts. Uh, so, you see a tree. It has uh, here clinical characteristics and molecular profiling. And you'll notice that folders 2 and 3 are missing. These are imaging and biobank, respectively. So what we try to do is keep the data tree the same for all the studies. And we adhere to the work packages used in trade. And uh, up to a certain point, all the folders will be the same. And we also, because we are involved with the data team, we try to, hey, a new user comes. OK, we'll model it in this way. We'll help you. Uh, what is really nice, actually, like at the beginning of the project, you could not enter metadata, and you had to figure things out with shuffling the folders. Now it is possible to enter metadata, so if you right-click the mouse button right now, uh, everyone can see the metadata with links back to the clinical trial data, the publications, and where to find the other data. So that's really nice. So to have a look at the, the questions, like... For which patients do we have copy number data? This is an actual question from another PhD student. And she was searching for hours through lab journals, couldn't find it, ended up in my room, asked the question, and I was like, we have the data in Transmart. I'll just look it up for you. And within a minute, I could tell her which patients had copy number data. Uh, so you can do the similar. If you have the type of data, here you can see two uh, genes. Yes, you can look it up. Same for survival data and for any other data. So that really saves searching time. So for the second question, between two PhD students, which subjects are in their studies and is there an overlap? During the import efforts, we discovered that sometimes it's easier to create a data note saying like, okay, these subjects participated in the Nature Communications paper and these in another study. And then it's simple a matter of dragging the notes into the subset, pressing the summary statistics button, and you will get an overview. And in this case, uh, 
likely you can't be able to read it, but there is an overlap of approximately 150 cases. So that elucidates why there were differences in versioning uh, of the clinical files. And here in the grid view you can see, uh, if, if you were to zoom in, which patients belong to a study and which patients belong to both of the studies. So in this way, Transmart entry of data was actually used as uh, a ver as a review and check mechanism, went back to the original data, checked it, and re-uploaded the data. So the data is in Transmart, and now we can finally do some exploration. Transmart has general analysis, uh, for example, also the Fisher exact test and the survival analysis. Uh, but for the decode use case, three extra analyses were developed, uh, correlating chromosomal alterations to patient survival. Uh, making a plot of frequency of chromosomal alterations uh, compared to a group label, and then also testing whether these chromosomal alterations significantly differ between different group labels. So that enables us now to ask the question, can I reproduce the results if I have the process data of my PhD students? So this is the paper, and what we really learned during this exercise, even if you have the paper, Metadata and version control of the data is really crucial. We really need to work on good data stewardship. So showing some examples. Uh, this is figure two of the manuscript. And what you need to know is chromosomal alteration frequencies in different treatment arms are plotted. So what you see for Cairo arm A, arm B, and Cairo 2 arm A are for the chromosomes the frequency of patients that have an uh, increase of genetic material versus and, and a decrease in uh, genetic material. So this is a really simple thing. Uh, so here you can see in the study tree we had created these extra nodes to be able to select for the patients. We have this regions file, we put it into the analysis and we press run. So here you can also see that it is possible to trace back the raw data. You just click on the link and you'll be brought to GEO where you can find uh, the study. And here you see the results uh, of Transmart. And uh, I can tell you that the frequency plots are exactly the same. So that's really nice. And now for a more extensive query. Uh, described in the article is that there are copy numbered profile patients. And uh, an exclusion was made of patients that had microsatellite instability. The patient must have had two or more treatment cycles in the first therapy line of Cairo arm A. So we also figured out how to model uh, this part here, and then we wanted to examine the progression-free survival. So in the subset tab, we can specify for these subjects which we want to have. Then we go to an advanced analysis in Transmart, and we just drag in the items that we're interested in. And in the article, it stated that a chromosomal loss on the regional 5Q was significantly correlated to progression-free survival. So we run the analysis. And then this is actually an input uh, of the data that was handed over, but now with results. And if we find the corresponding region, you can see that the survival curves are the same. So that's also really nice. So with Transmart, you can explore your available data. Uh, and here you see some other types of analysis that are possible. So really good, the data is in. We can reproduce published results. And we can also perform additional analysis. We don't just have to repeat every time figure two. We can also, it's there. We can just drag and slide everything. Some analysis can be, can be done in Transmart. Some questions should be asked in Transmart. However, there's this gray area still of which questions should you answer in Transmart or which should you be directed out and uh, perform different types of analysis. Uh, like for the raw data, then you're really a domain expert and you really need different tools for this. So some examples of going to a different environment. Uh, you saw we added some metadata to the region file that we can go to GEO to get the raw data. How does this relate actually to FAIR, what we talked about in, in the beginning? Well, for findable and accessible, okay, you can just press the link, you go to GEO. How does it relate to interoperable? Like if I had the more than three, uh, two treatment cycles, if I had only uh, patients that had not MSI, if I make this extensive query, I don't want to go to GEO and see all the patients and still have to search for which patients I want. So interoperability, less. You can send a request, 
but no data is being transferred. And as to reusable, if you do have access to the data and you are the domain expert, yes, you can reuse it. So one example is making a DNA profile of just one patient. Uh, you can't do this in Transmart right now. You would have to get the raw data, run your R scripts with exactly the same pipeline as the data owner used uh, in order to visualize this. Uh, as for the process data, like how it relates to FAIR, yes, you can find it, you can access it, you can even export it and use it in other tools of your own choice. Uh, like for the non-omics data, it is uh, available in a really simple manner. However, if you look at the interoperability, the data format has been extensively altered. Like if you have original RCGH data, the format gets totally transformed and uploaded. So if you then export the data, you get a table like this. Uh, so users need to do some tweaking in order to being able to use their data again. It's possible, but not all that direct interoperable. So reusable, yes, up to an extent. Of note, process data, what goes in must come out. If you uploaded the data and you export it, you cannot expect extra data to be present. However, if you uh, uploaded the data, you should definitely be able to export everything that you uploaded, preferably in the same format. And uh, this is the example of the Bioportal. Like the data team can model the study in Transmart and then Jan Hudicek wrote a script called TM2C Bio. And basically with several pushes of the button, making it really easy, uh, you can export Transmart and uh, convert it to a Portal format. Now C Portal is an environment that uh, looks at the data at the gene level. Uh, so, for instance, here you can see mutations at a gene level. And if you show to translational researchers, they're really happy. So, it's possible now. Uh, lessons that we learned by using this study as a pilot, actually, is that it is really difficult to obtain data from a data owner, and especially when it occurs retrospectively and a PhD student has left. Things like uh, format and the content that is required for upload uh, need to be discussed, and lacking description or explanation uh, that is not available in the publication but was an oh yeah but I did that situation uh, to produce results it's really crucial to write down the metadata uh, and the same for version issues uh, from same subjects in different studies so in general we now know where the KVATs are so we can improve data management and work on it it's a work in progress the data team is really crucial for the upload of data like, and there should be an iterative feedback loop between the data team members and the data owners themselves. It is not dumping your data, running away and hoping when you come back the data is modeled, curated into Transmart. It is really a team effort here. Also in Transmart, while you can reproduce some things, you can't reproduce everything. You have to create and supply extra files uh, in order uh, to query, for instance, one gene. Uh, like the data owner usually only has either a probe level file or a region file. If you want to query this in Transmart, can't do it. Uh, so create a new file. You can't select subjects based on a chromosomal region result from another analysis. Uh, you would have to re-upload the results as new data and then you can try and do an analysis. So I know there was something that you could store it in Transmart, like if we ask Kees van Bokke over later, he can tell you what it was. Uh, but so far it is not available yet. So for instance, here in figure 5 of uh, the article, we have results for a chromosomal region, and you can see the progression-free survival for three different treatment arms. Now we had to structure progression-free survival notes in a certain manner, it was typically the only way that we could do it. Uh, so even if we could do this part, Right now, we cannot drag three progression-free data nodes in an analysis and actually use it. Uh, so there is some missing functionality still. Uh, basically, Transmart development in trade was use case based. There was a list of requirements uh, for functionality for the use case. This was discussed with the data owner and actually executed to the letter. However, now that the data is in Transmart and you show it to the users and to the researchers, they got more questions, they want to be able to do more. And in some cases it's like, oh, wait a minute, but that can't be asked yet. So then you can have new development. Not all visualizations are possible. Sometimes you need to download the data and go to other tools. 
uh, we had longitudinal data in here, but uh, we had to store it in a different manner. If we now want to view it in a timeline manner, we have to export this to SPSS and create a plot uh, there, for instance. Smart R, really nice. Would like to see more Smart R analysis in there. Uh, for interactive viewing of the data as well and adding more Smart R visualizations. As stated, timeline and longitudinal data are an issue for many, so I'm really looking forward to a talk that's going to show longitudinal data in Transmacht. And uh, in general, a tool, every tool has this issue, interoperability with other tools. You, if you have an extensive selection and you want to know if there is biobank information, you don't want to follow the link, knock on the door, and then have access to the entire study. You want to, for instance, be able to only see the patients that you selected for, because otherwise you still have extra work. Uh, so to conclude, actually, the decode study has been and is being made available in Transmart. There are more decode studies uh, that are being treated now for Transmart. It is possible to view and query process data to an extent. And actually improvement of current Transmart user friendliness and functionality, like also uh, dotting the I's, crossing the T's, would be a plus and actually is a must if the user, uh, if the tool is to obtain an active researcher user community. Uh, potential users will only start using the tool once their own data is in there. You can tell them, go play around with the cell line use case. They don't care. They want their own data. So what's really important now is that the data team in trade is helping the users to get their data ready. They know from other initiatives that there are harmonization efforts uh, being offered, like what is the data format, the content, and the semantics. So they try to align there. They also can offer documentation now and templates for the user to make it easy for them. Like, hey, you got non-omics data? Here, you have a template. Fill it in. Come back. Uh, so that, that makes it easier. And this should all be done in collaboration with the data owners also. So they have input. Like, oh, but I want to be able to do this. Oh, in that case, we can do that, for instance. And then get users to actively start using the tool and provide feedback. And feedback can be done, for instance, in a demo your own data session that you force the PIs themselves or the PhD students to give a demo on Transmart. Can they do what they want? If the answer is yes, that's great. A likely answer that you'll get is yes. Oh, but can I do this? Can I do this? That's also great. What can be done in that case to ac accommodate the researcher? And if you have a no or not completely, then you have to really evaluate like, okay, what can be done? Uh, so Feedback should really drive development now. So let's get more study data into Transmart and have feedback drive development. With that, I'd like to thank a lot of people for the inputs and work with trade. Uh, and I'll take questions. Yeah, it's a, it's a, um, uh, well, a sword that slices two ways. Like, for instance, Gerrit and Raymond, they are really happy that they can reproduce, for instance, also protein results or copy number results. So for them, the process data side is really important. However, for the PhD student, uh, for instance, the example I gave, she was, uh, there was this uh, student, and she was looking all over the place to find some data. She didn't even know if it existed. You open Transmart, you know that it's there. And right now, the switch should be there that, okay, I am doing a research project. The moment that I have these finalized results, I will accommodate my research data onto a stable platform like Transmart. And then other people know what I have done, and I will always be able to see what data is readily available. And then once more researchers start using it, they can access also other people's data, and then they will become enthusiastic about it, and they will start using it. So then it's not just the PI, like, can I reproduce my results? No, then it's like someone is at a conference, and they hear about this gene. Oh, wait a minute, I have copy number data. I'll just look it up in my gene. It's actually something that Gerrit did a while ago. And he can then say, like, oh, but these patients have a gain for that uh, chromosomal region. Oh, that's interesting. Let's examine further. So, yeah, both that is the answer. Yeah. 
Yeah, so definitely. Agreed. And uh, I think also that 17.1 will really bring the user friendliness more to the front. And uh, because it is also possible to go from Transmart to CBIO portal, uh, it, it will all aid for the user friendliness. But indeed, like the bioinformaticians, they're like, I don't care. Like, I've got my art tools, I can use it. But then it's the moment like, okay, but I want to reproduce your results. Where's your pipeline? In trade, there's also Galaxy and other instances that they can put their pipeline in. And then other people can run the pipeline. So also bioinformaticians will have to do their own data management. They may not want to do it from their perspective, but the moment that someone asks for quality assurance, they need it. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, but 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 uh, for, for instance, that the heat maps are available in Smart R right now, and you can just select on the heat mar on the heat map. You can shuffle your patients, you can shuffle your genes, you can set your cutoffs. That's really nice. Uh, for instance, proteomics data. I would really like to see that accommodated. You have these bubble plots. Uh, you have the binomial t test, and then you have some specific proteomics visualizations. Uh, like the researchers, they have the R scripts basically ready. And then they're like, yeah, but why would I use Transmart? Yes, I can get a heat map, but uh, okay. So you want to just expand. Actually, you want to make an inventory uh, of the, the users, like in the demo your own data. And then it's like, but can I do this? Can I do that? And then you get the feedback for it. Uh, one example also is, for instance, uh, if you have a study with multiple centers and you're combining different tissue types, different time points. In Smart R, you can uh, make these extra nodes available, combine it into a heat map. You want to be able to do that with all the data types, not just RNA, not just protein. You also want to extend it to DNA. And how the omics subsetting uh, functionality will fit into this, 16.2 will tell. Uh, what what you would be able to do with the data in Transmart? Oh, no, I, I mean, like, wouldn't you like to see this data? Oh, yeah, like definitely, definitely. Like, something that is a little bit out of the scope of the tool, but I think not only you desire that. Yeah, no, like, if, if it was possible in Transmart, like, uh, like also what uh, Alex Umigen said, if you can just send the data, do an analysis outside of Transmart, and then only get the results back that you want inside of Transmart without leaving the tool. If you could do the same for CBioPortal-like visualizations, that would be great. But we can't do that right now yet. So that's why it's great already that we have this easy manner to get your data from Transmart to CBioPortal. So yes, I do want it, but you have to start somewhere. I support it. <laughs> Can you comment briefly on how the data team works? Uh, well, I could call Weibo to the front, but... <laughs> okay, so shortly, uh, there's a team. We have a data team, and members of that are from the Hive. Uh, Weibo Pipping is also uh, involved with it heavily. And basically what we do is we search out the customers, and then we have a discussion first with the customers. And they tell their user story, like, okay, I'm doing this kind of research, I'm gathering this kind of data. And then we are already thinking, okay, clinical data, biobank data, okay, this can be done. And Vibo is great, he's the technical person, I'm just the one that's like, it goes in the black box, goes out again. And he can say like, oh, wait a minute, it can't be done in Transmart, but it can be done in this way. So if you export the data, I can make a script and do it. Uh, but then basically, the, the user, the data owner, is given templates that they can fill in right now. You saw a part of the tree uh, from the Decode Work Package 5 study, and users are, are asked to model their study if they agree with it uh, onto those fields. And, uh, well, then they come back, data uploads the team, there is an evaluation, are you happy, yes or no? The answer is no. Try and try and try again until they are happy with the data. And, well, that, that's basically the procedure for now. Not a short answer, okay. Okay, if there are no further questions, thank you.